It's no secret that construction has traditionally been thought of as a man's job. But more and more women are entering the field, and now there are more and more opportunities for them to do so. Carolee McGrath sat down with Jason Garand and Lisa Clausen, both of Local 336, New England Regional Council of Carpenters, to learn more. So I work to recruit women into the Carpenters Union. We have a four-year apprenticeship program, um, so women can come in from other fields and get fully trained, start working on a job, getting trained on the job, and then go to training with us and learn all the skills of becoming a carpenter. I'm also able to sometimes recruit women who are working non-union um, as a carpenter already who come in as a journey level carpenter. Um, and then I also work to get more work for the Carpenters Union and for the women that we're recruiting in. So it's getting more owners of construction work to require diversity um, of their, their construction projects that they're running. Um, Sometimes that then helps open up opportunities to ensure that women get a fair shake um, and opportunity to showcase their skills and showcase that they can do this work as well as the men can. So what kind of opportunities are there as far as jobs right now for women? Uh, all the same opportunities as for men. Mm -hmm. So uh, construction is a, a complicated business. It is something that we say from foundation to finish. And uh, whatever you like to do is what you can do. We uh, do the foundation of a building. You're doing the conc uh, concrete work. You go to the framing, the drywall, the finish, the ceilings, uh, cabinets and windows and all that stuff. So what happens is uh, there's an opportunity to come into the program through our, our apprenticeship uh, facility in Millbury. They sort of start to choose their path and um, in four years they've learned all the aspects of construction and they say this is what I like best. Right. So yeah. And tell us some of the partnerships with the local businesses. I know um, MGM is one but there are also colleges as well. So tell us about those projects. Sure. So um, uh, the state set goals under Deval Patrick for um, a percentage of the work hours to go to women and also to people of color to work to open up the industry uh, to create more opportunities for people in it. So the State Gaming Commission, when they um, were doing the licensing process for the casinos, said that this was important to them. And MGM followed suit and set requirements of 6.9% of the work hours as a floor, as a minimum, to go to women. 15.3% work hours for people of color and 8% work hours for veterans. Um, if it's a woman of color, she gets counted in both categories for the contractors. So they required this, con they informed and educated contractors on it so contractors knew to come in with diverse work crews and that's opened up a tremendous amount of opportunity on that uh, job. UMass also does it up at UMass Amherst. The UMass Building Authority has similar goals for their work, same numbers, um, though they don't track veterans, they do it for women and people of color. And so that's created a, a tremendous amount of opportunity on those jobs as well. Um, typically on a, a private job construction site, you might find no women or one or two or three um, tradeswomen across different trades working. It's, it's isolating work when you're the only woman on a, a big job site of, say, 100 construction workers. That's not been the case at MGM and at UMass where there's been these opportunities created. And how do you change that? Like when I have a, I have a teenage daughter, okay, and before I send her to you, right, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that she's going to be treated nicely, fairly, you know, that it's not going to be uncomfortable. But it, but it has to be awkward to be the only gal walking on, and, and intimidating, I would think, walking onto a construction site. Has it changed through the years? Oh, absolutely. I came in in uh, 1989, and at that point in time, there was three women, and it was, you know, the, the industry was in looking for women to come into the trades. Uh, there was no thought of, you know, how to commingle. Uh, the reality is it's a much easier time today, though it's still a learning process. There's companies that have a set crew. They've been making the company money to say, can you hire a female um, to, to replace somebody is the way they think about it. And the answer to us is no. There's, when there's additional uh, work crew, you, you hire on. And from that, you find that, um, I'll give you a great example, J.F. White. They had, uh, did the I-91 viaduct project, 
well, you know, for the last two years, we've been driving over that, right? It's, uh, it's close to completion. And one of their top foremen is a female that is 105 pounds. So she can do it. She's she is mighty. doing. <laughs> the, the problem is she is isolated. You yeah. know, there's not a lot of other women out there today. But I, you know, I just want to say that the two people really to uh, thank. One is MGM mm -hmm. because they were the first ones to really say, we're serious about this. Right. This is not a wink and nod program, everybody. And if you think you are walking in like, oh, that's how we did it before, we got you. Mm -hmm. No, you're going to be unpleasantly surprised. The other is the city of Springfield. The mayor is very excited about adding language to the projects that the city controls through, uh, you know, whether it's a school or the new police stations that are coming up. And they say, we want language that talks about hiring women, hiring minorities, and hiring residents. And so that is, uh, is a nice segue to the next project for females to come to. And then eventually what will happen is it'll just be like every other industry right. in, in the uh, <laughs> in the country, right? We're the last ones to sort of, sort of have that. I think maybe the military is going through it too. So, and if you were to sell uh, young women on this, uh, how much money are they going to make after, you know, four years of, of the training? You know, is this, is this a, a, a job that they can have and they can raise children and, you know, pay a mortgage? Yes, absolutely. So a, a journey level carpenter in Western Mass is making over $35 an hour in wow. straight wages <laughs> yeah. and then very strong benefits of pension, annuity, family health insurance that covers not just the individual, of course, but any dependents and spouse. Um, so it's, it's a really strong package that, and it's four years of free training. Um, so as we talk to young students who are in high school right now and are considering college debt and not sure what they want to do and taking that on, we tell them consider Carpenters College. Um, you will start working immediately where you're then paired up with a skilled carpenter on the job and trained on the job. And then every three months you go for a week of school um, through our training center. And so over the course of the year, you're going four times to school and you do that for four years. You start, our, our starting apprenticeship rate right now is a little over $16 an hour for an unskilled carpenter plus benefits. And then um, every year there's an increase in salary as they gain more skills on the job and through going to school with Which us. is not bad for an 18-year-old coming out of high school. Right. Well, and actually, um, we have two women who came in. One was a mom, and she was struggling. She was looking for, she moved to Springfield because she just wasn't finding enough job opportunities, and she was homeless. Mm -hmm. And um, she had the skills. She just needed an opportunity. And she is a success story with us. A veteran uh, came in. She was over in Leeds and, you know, moved into the area saying, I'd like to put down roots. The roots are set. She is now a successful carpenter over at MGM. And she is on her way to a middle class life. And that's, that's the opportunities that you can get.